All right, so let's try this again. Um, we add for uh, number one, we add 14 over 2 squared. So that becomes x squared plus 14x plus 49. Factor that, 49 and 14, 7 and 7. So this becomes x plus 7 times x plus 7, which is x plus 7 squared. All right, that was number one. Number two, we got square root of negative nine. So this is can, can be rewritten as x uh, square root of negative one times square root of nine. This is three, square root of negative one is i for imaginary, there it is. For addition, we got i minus five plus i plus two. Let's combine like terms. So what is i plus i, two i? What is negative five and, and positive two? So that is negative three. All right, our subtraction, i minus five minus, I hope you remember to put the parentheses, i plus two. Why the parentheses? We, because we need to distribute the invisible negative one in here. So that's negative one, negative one i, negative one i. All right, plus uh, minus two, and then I bring down the i minus five. Combine like terms, what is negative i plus i? They cancel. And what is negative five and negative two? That's negative seven. Multiplication, i minus five times i plus two. We use the distributive property, i times i, i squared, i times two, that's positive two i negative five times i, negative five i, and negative five times two, that's negative 10. Combine like terms, which is right here. So we end up with negative three, bring down the i squared and bring down the negative three i, and bring down the negative 10. And once again, as I mentioned before, we still have one more step to go on that, but we'll get to that when we get to the lesson. And last but not least, division i minus five divided by i plus two. So question, what number times i gives me one i? One. One times i is i, one times two is two. And what do I do? I subtract. Why do I need to write it there, Mr. Q, to remind me that these change to their opposites, this cancels. So we're left with negative five, negative two, that's negative seven. Since we have a remainder, then I need to write my quotient, uh, uh, one, fraction bar, remainder is negative seven. And the divisor is i plus two. There you go. Is it coming back? Yes. Yes, Mr. Q. All right, good. Let's go with the inverses for uh, part four. Given the function for a f of x equals x plus two over five, I need to write the inverse. How do we do that? Well, we need to change it to y form. That's the first step. And then it's x plus two over five. How does it do that? There it is. All right, so to leave x by itself, let's get rid of this five first. So we multiply times five, multiply times five. Five over five is a giant one. That leaves us with five y equals x plus two. We need to leave the x by itself, so we subtract two, subtract two. That leaves us with five y minus two equals x. So now that we have it in x form, because over here is y form, in x form at this point, we do the interchange to make it the inverse, right? That's what makes it an inverse, when we interchange the variables here. So we end up with five x minus two equals y. However, can we leave it like that? No, Mr. Q. All right, so we need to write the inverse instead of y. So I'm gonna write f inverse of x instead of y, and then I'm gonna bring down the five x minus two. This is our inverse. Let me do part B. Part B reads f of x equals two thirds x minus five. 
Same process, change it to y form. That leaves us with 2 thirds x minus 5. I need to leave x by itself. So that means I need to leave this by itself. So I add 5 to each side, add 5. We end up with y plus 5 equals 2 over 3x. I'm going to go one step at a time. Some of you can do the reciprocal. That's fine. But right now, I'm just going to go step by step. So what do I do? I need to get rid of this 3. So I need to multiply times 3. I need to multiply this side times 3. So this is a giant 1. That leaves us with 2x equals distribute, distribute, 3y plus 15. And then from there, I need to divide by 2, divide by 2. So we're left with 3y plus 15 over 2 equals x. All right, are we done, Mr. Q? No, we started with y form, oh, y form over here. Now we have x form. So what do we do to make it its inverse? At this point, we interchange the variables. 3x plus 15 over 2 equals y. And then we write our inverse. Instead of y, I write f inverse of x equals 2, 3x plus 15. It's fine if you leave it like that for right now. And that's our inverse. Inverse. How do we do? Yes? You're like, Mr. Hugh, I just got kind of stuck on the second one. But the first one was OK, yeah? That's Mr. Q. All right. All right. So. Uh, Let's move on. That was our warm up. So hopefully with the plenty of practice that we had with inverses, uh, hopefully we got closer for today's lesson. So here we go. Our agenda for today, we got warm up number 39 and we're looking at inverse of functions. We're finally here to this lesson and tonight's home play is pages 53 and 54 only. Bam. <laughs> only. You guys like that, right? All right, so um, so it's only two pages. And once again, those of you, a reminder that need to attend tutoring, especially those of you that are struggling with the functions and their inverses, you need to attend tutoring. We'll be here after lunch at one o'clock. So be there or be elsewhere. <laughs> all right, here we go. Made you guys think about that square, right? Thinking math all the time. Our synchronous session code is NU4EB, NU4EB, NU4EB. Once again, don't fall behind with your uh, notes. I was browsing through my Nearpod reports. Uh, I think it was yesterday, the day before. Some of you have not completed some of your notes. I'm just letting you know it's 25% of your grade. If you don't do any notes this semester, you're automatically bringing your whole overall grade the most you can get is a 75 percent which is a c and that's if you get a perfect score on the test a perfect score on the pop parties perfect score on the home place so you need to start turning in your uh, assignments please pretty please with a cherry on top yes mr q all right your previous home play was to make a video for these two transformations go ahead and go to canvas submit that please Earlier, I had some people submitting some TikToks. So, oh, let's go. Let's go. I'm going to see what you guys did there. Do that right now. And reminder. Uh, Mr. Q. Yeah, home play uh, my today phone is ran out of storage when I was editing the video and uh -huh. uh, I corrupted it. Yay. We'll Yay. Say you want the corrupted video? I want to see if I can translate it. Let's go. All right, good luck. All right, uh, I'll give you some time for that. Get a Cornell note ready. I'm gonna pause this for a little bit. Once again, guys, make sure uh, you, need, you need at least four coordinate planes from negative 10 to 10. Make sure you have those handy. And today uh, we're gonna finally get to the end of this introduction of functions, uh, unit uh, module one, I mean. Uh, so uh, let's do this. Our objective for today, I can identify and graph an inverse of a function. Once again, I can identify and graph an inverse of a function. 
So according to our objective, the main idea that we're still working on is what? Function. So you know how to fill out your fair model, definition, one example, one unexample, and a hashtag. You got that, okay? But our, what are we doing today? We're finding the inverse of the function, which we've been doing on the warm-ups, but we're also identifying it and graphing them. So you're going to see that today in regards to what we're going to do with that. Let's move on. So you should have filled out your fair model. You can do that on your own for functions. Yes. Yes, Mr. Q. All right, good. So on your blank sheet of paper, not the one with the uh, coordinate plane on a blank sheet of paper. Write this down, example Q. Identify the inverse of a function using a mapping diagram. Now, I'm gonna take you back to when we started with functions. You guys remember when we started with functions? Yes, Mr. Q, that I gave you guys a relation. From there, I showed you three different ways of representing uh, a function. And I said, we can represent it using a mapping diagram, a table, and the coordinate plane with different points. Today, we're gonna to start with mapping diagrams. So check this out. So a function given is the domain negative four, zero, one, four, and with a range of negative two, negative three, two, one. And it's called a mapping diagram because this shows which one corresponds to which. So here we go, negative four corresponds to negative two, zero to negative three, one to negative, I mean, one to two, and four to one. So just a refresher, what is the definition of a function? Definition of a function, let's see. How about, where, how about, um, David, definition of a function. Uh, a relationship that assigns exactly uh, one input value for each output. Bam, exactly one input for each output. Thank you, David. So here we have for each input there's exactly one output there it is that's a function okay so this is called a mapping diagram because it maps it here it is you guys remember these yes yes mr q all right so writing utensils down look up to the screen i'm going to show you how to find the inverse of this function using a mapping diagram pay attention to this part or you're going to miss it Writing utensils down, don't write anything down, just focus. Domain and range. Look at my domain. I'm using this function to write its inverse. Who sees what I see? Show me with your hands if you see it. I see some of the hands. Okay, some of you see it. Okay. So think about the warm up. The warm up, what did we do to write its inverse? We interchange the variables. You guys remember that? Yes, Mr. Q. So hopefully, those of you that don't see it, look up. Here I started with a domain which corresponds to X, range corresponds to Y. But when we write the inverse of this, now the Y becomes what? The X. That means that over here, what am I going to write? Each one of these correspond to what? To the X values, negative four, zero, one, and four. Copy that, please. All right, and just to make it obvious for your notes, label this domain what does that correspond to? X, and this one is Y. And then to write the inverse, now this Y becomes X. And this X becomes Y. That's what makes it the inverse. All right, so now that we got this, I'm gonna give you one set of uh, a function and I want you to write it in a mapping format so that you can show me the inverse. Here we go. Example, mega Q. 
same verbiage. You don't need to copy the instructions. You already have them. It says identify the inverse of the function using the mapping diagram. Function, domain, negative one, zero, one, two. Range, three, four, five, six. Here's the mapping for each. Negative one to three, zero to four, one to five, and two to six. Write me the inverse of this function, please, in a map and diagram. Copy and go. All right, so let's see. Inverse, inverse. Help me out with the domain first of the inverse. Uh, hey, Leanne, what'd you write for your uh, domain for your inverse? I put three, four, five, and six. Hands if you got that. That is correct. Pass it to someone, Alien. Now I need my range. Uh, David? David, what's our range? Negative one, zero, one, two. Thank you. And yes, that corresponds to that, to that, to that, and to that. And that's our inverse. We got this, yes? Yes, Mr. Q, piece of cake. All right. And that's using mapping diagrams. Now let's go and do the same thing now, but using a coordinate plane. We're going to plot some points on the coordinate plane. So get your first coordinate plane in front of you. Here we go. Example. Super cute. And it's and it says graph, and here's the uh, the function given, or the relation. Uh, we have bracket, and then we have parentheses negative four, negative two, close parentheses, comma, open parentheses zero, negative three, close parentheses, comma, open parentheses one, two, close parentheses, comma, open parentheses four, one, close parentheses, and close bracket or the solution set bracket. And then it says, then graph the inverse. So for right now, let's graph this. So I'm gonna, let's graph those in, in black. I'm gonna use black for plotting the function. So my first point is negative four, negative two. Negative four, negative two, which is right there. Next one is zero, negative three, zero, negative three. Next one is one, two, one, two. Next one is four, one, four, one. All right. So now I need to graph the inverse. So now they give me points here. So look what I'm going to do for the inverse. I open a bracket. And for the first point, which is negative four, two, I'm going to write what? for the inverse, negative two, negative four, comma. For the next one, which was zero, negative three, I'm gonna write what? Negative three and zero. And why am I doing that? Because we're doing the what? The inverse. We are interchanging the variables. Next one. The next one was from the original function one, two, I'm going to write two, one, comma. And the last one where we have four, one, so we're going to write one, four. And why did I do that? Because we are interchanging the variables for the inverse. Let's plot that. Negative two, negative four. Negative two, negative four. Negative three. Uh, negative three, zero. Zero. Wait, did I get the wrong point? Negative three, zero. Oh yeah, I did, sorry. Let me do this one again. The original was zero, negative three, which is down here. And this one is negative three, zero. All right. Uh, two, one, two, one. And one, four, one, four. All right, there it is. Then copy these instructions. It says, what do you observe about the graphs of the function and its inverse in relationship to the line y equals x? So, they, so basically they're asking us, 
observe these according to this line, looking at it through the lens of, the, of this line y equals x. So that means I need to graph y equals x. So for every y, there's an exactly one x. So let's start with, with one y, there's one x, so one, one is there, two, two is there, three, three is there, four, four is there. So that's our y equals x. Let me go backwards, zero, zero, negative one, negative one, negative two, negative two, negative three, negative three, and so on and so forth. And let's graph that in blue. Okay. So. Writing utensils down, look up to the screen. Very important, look up. So they want me to observe according to this line and what we did with these points. So look up. I'm going to start with the original. The original was negative uh, four, negative two. And I'm going to match this one to its inverse, negative two, negative four, negative four negative two, so here it is, and negative two, negative four, its inverse is right here, looking at it through this lens of this line. Okay, I think I see what you're seeing, Mr. Q. Let me go to the next one. Zero, negative three, and negative three, zero. Zero, negative three, and negative three, zero. Okay, I think I see what you see, Mr. Q. Let me go to the next one. One, two, and two, one. One, two, and two, one. What do you guys notice? According to that line we just drew, the blue line, y equals x, what's happening to the point and its inverse? What do you guys notice? What's a key word that you would say your, to your little cousin if they walked in and interrupted our session? One word, what do you guys think? Reflected. Reflected, yes, a reflection. So we're looking at a re reflection reflection why because now y equals x is serving as a mirror a mirror so if we look at it like this because kind of like you guys every day that you wake up and you take a shower right <laughs> You go to the to the mirror and you physically are a certain distance from the mirror. Well, guess what? The reflection in there is the same distance away from the mirror. Same here. This distance is the same as this distance. Same here, here, same there and there, same there and there. So now we're going to be looking at through the lens of this y equals x as a mirror. Okay. All right. So I did one with you guys. Now I'm going to have you guys do one by yourself. Ready? Here we go. Example, Chazam Q. It says graph negative 3, 9, negative 2, 4, negative 1, 1, 0, 0, and then graph the inverse, and then see what you observe through the line y equals x. I'll give you some time. Copy that and go. Uh, David, pass someone. Uh, whoever. <laughs> All right, whoever, go. Give me the inverse of each of those uh, points. Nine, negative three. Nine, negative three. Four, negative two. Four negative two. <laughs> Sorry, um, one negative one. One negative one. And then zero, zero. Zero, zero. Thank you, Angeline. <laughs> so for next time when they say whoever, we're going to call Angeline. Let's go. <laughs> yep. Uh, all right. Negative three, nine. Negative three, nine is up here. Negative two, four. Negative one, one, zero, zero. Okay, so now let me graph the uh, inverses. 
9, negative 3, 9, negative 3, uh, 4, negative 2, 4, negative 2, 1, negative 1, and 0, 0. Okay? And if you plot it, your y equals x straight down the middle like so. And you did that in blue. That's our y equals x. And what do we see? Do you guys concur that all of these are what? They're doing what? Reflections. They are reflections from one another. We good? Yeah? Yes, Mr. Q. All right. So, so far, so good, I think. Yes. Let's see how we did from one to five in front of you. We got a poll going. How comfortable do you feel so far with uh, uh, functions and their inverses? Uh, four, five, 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 one, one. Okay. So, once again, reminder those of you that are struggling with this, make sure you see us uh, during lunch, I mean, after lunch at one o'clock. All right. So let's move on. So we're done with that portion. Okay. So the next one, check this out. It's going to get a little bit funner. Yes. Okay. So you're going to need a new coordinate plane. You're going to need plenty of space because we're going to do a lot of work. Okay. Here we go. Example, Michael Jordan Q. Let's go. Copy these instructions, please, because this is exactly worded just like uh, in the home plate. So make sure you copy the instructions and it reads. Example, Michael Jordan Q says, find the inverse function, in, uh, function inverse of x for the given function f of x, period. Then it says, use composition to verify that the functions are inverses, okay? And then at the end, then graph the functions and their inverses. Okay. So there it is. And they give us the function f of x equals negative 3x plus 4. I'll give you some time. Copy and go. All right, here we go, guys. So it says find the inverse function. And it, it's, it's written f inverse of x for the given function f of x. So that part we already know how to do because we've been working on that for the warmups. Is that correct? Yes, Mr. Q. So I'm gonna make some room over here to the left side of my screen so that we can do the inverse of the original function f of x equals negative three x plus four. Let's do that one together. So I'm gonna write this over here on the left side and I'm gonna write uh, f of x equals negative three x plus four. All right, and we're gonna do this first part. I'm gonna underline it so you guys can see where we're at. This first part, which is finding the inverse. Do we know how to find the inverse? Yes, Mr. Q, the process that we did on the warmup. So what do we do? First, change it to Y form. I'm gonna do that in blue. Y equals negative three X plus four. Next, what do we do? We need to solve for x. So I'm gonna circle here x and I need to get rid of everything else. So I need to subtract four, subtract four. I'm left with y minus four equals negative three x. Is x already by itself? Almost, what's next to it? The negative three. So that means I need to divide by negative three because the negative three is multiplying, divide by negative three. And I'm left with y minus four over negative three equals x. So we started with y form, now we have it in x form. Okay, so let's make it to the inverse. What process do we need to make it its inverse? Well, we need to interchange the x and the y. There's no magic, there's no, you know, there's this and that. You, you just write, instead of y, you write x, instead of x, you write y. So we have x minus four over negative three equals y. However, can we leave it in y form? No, Mr. Q. Why not? Because we already have y form over here at the beginning. So now we're going to write the inverse. I'm going to do this in red. So we write f inverse of x instead of the y. 
and the other side stays the same, x minus four over negative three. This is our what? Inverse. Okay. How we doing? Good? You're like, Mr. Q, this is a piece of cake. Yeah, I know, because we've been practicing. However, here goes the funner part. <laughs> Welcome to my domain. All right. Domain, see what I did there? Yeah. Anyways, all right, look up to the screen. Next part, it says, uh, use composition to verify. What do you think the word verify means? Yeah, very good. We need to check. We need to check and see if they are their inverses. So what does that mean, Mr. Q? Look up really quick for those of you that are, are a little confused still. Remember when we started, let me scoot this up a little bit. When we started earlier, we said we were gonna look at it through the lens of what? Of y equals x, is that correct? That means if we're looking at it inversely, that means that over here is going to be X and over here Y and vice versa. But since now we don't use Y, we use F of X, it's the same thing. At the end, look up, whenever we check at the end, if we start with F of X, we need to end up with X. Or if we start with F inverse of X, we need to end up with X because we interchange those. So how can we do that, Mr. Q? Here it goes. Write your utensils down, look up to the screen. First, I'm gonna check for f of x. Pay attention to this part. Where's f of x? Right here. So I'm gonna write this, but after I know what I'm gonna substitute, what am I gonna substitute to check? To check, I'm gonna substitute in here the inverse. What is the inverse? f inverse of x. You're like, what? Let me show you, here we go. I'm gonna take the original f of x. So here it is, f parentheses equals, then I have negative three parentheses plus four. Move this over a little bit, there it is. All right, so do you notice that this is this, yes? Stay focused, please. Stop writing, you'll copy in a little bit. This is this, but instead of X here and X here, I put blanks because now I'm gonna substitute the inverse, F inverse of X. And what is the inverse? The inverse is over here. So this is one side, here it is. And what is the other side? The other side is the other part, which is X minus four over negative three. Do you guys see this? f of x equals x minus 4 equals negative 3. Yeah, it's right there. So at this point, the left side stays the same all the way through. We don't need to do anything. It's just a label to let us know what we're working with. What are we working with? With We substitute the inverse of x every step of the way, Mr. Q. Oh, okay, I get it. So what are we going to focus on then? We're going to focus on just on the right side. So here we go. Look up, please. I need to take this negative 3. And here's a parenthesis I need to distribute. And just pay attention, you'll copy at the end, I'll give you time. Negative three times X is negative three X. Negative three times negative four, that's positive 12 and all that over negative three. Bring down the plus four. Are we there so far? Okay, next, I'm gonna simplify. What is negative three X divided by negative three? That's X. What is 12 divided by negative three? That's negative four, and I bring down the plus four. Oh, plus four. There it is. Last, combine like terms. What is negative four and positive four? They cancel, and we're left with x. Did I end up with x like we predicted? Yes. Copy that, please. All right, here we go. So we checked that f of x, we ended up with x. Yes, here it is once we substituted the inverse. So now we're gonna do the opposite. We're gonna start now with 
f inverse of x, f inverse of x. So what are we going to do? We take f inverse of x, and we're going to substitute what in there now? Yeah, we're going to substitute what we started with, f of x. OK, so let me write f inverse of x. Here it is, over here. So I'm going to write it here, f inverse of x equals, what do we have? x minus 4 over 3. So I'm going to put parentheses, minus 4 over negative 3. Do you guys see this is here, yes? OK, but instead of x, I'm going to substitute what? f of x. So if I substitute f of x here, what was the original one? The original was f of x equals to what? Negative 3x plus 4. That goes right here, negative 3x plus 4. OK? So the left side stays the same all the way through, f inverse. And in here we do, we do f of x equals 2. Let's see what we get. Uh, we got negative 3. There it is. Let me go to the, to the, to the top of this. Here we go. Uh, is there anything multiplying this parentheses? No. So I'm going to combine like terms. I see negative 4 and positive 4. What is negative 4 and positive 4? Cancel, and that leaves us with what? Negative 3x, negative 3x. All right, one more step. F inverse of f of x equals, what is negative 3 over negative 3? 1, and that leaves us with 1x. Did we end up with x at the end? Yes. Copy that. And that's how we verify, or that's how we check. We need to do that for f of x, and we need to do for f inverse of x. Give you some time. All right, so let's see where we're at. As you're finishing copying that, here goes the whole process. First, we started by finding the inverse of f of x equals negative 3x plus 4 by changing it to y form, solving for x, interchanging the variables, and writing it as an inverse. Here it is. From there, we needed to verify or to check. We started with f of x, but instead of x, we substituted the inverse. So I wrote this function f of x equals negative 3x plus 4, but I just put open parentheses. I wrote the inverse and here ne negative three open parentheses times uh, x minus four over negative three and then at the end plus four. I simplified the right side and I ended up with x. From there I did the same thing with the inverse but instead of x I wrote f of x. So I wrote my inverse first but instead of x I wrote in there the f of x function simplified and I ended up with x. That tells me that it is verified, that one is the inverse of the other. Now that we have that, they want us to graph the function and its inverse. So let's do that. So I'm gonna take the, uh, the original function. Uh, it's f of x equals negative three x plus four. I'm gonna graph that in, do that in blue. What is my y-intercept? Positive four, positive four is right there. What is my slope? My slope is three down and one to the right. So I go one, two, three, one to the right, plot your point, do it again. One, two, three, one to the right, plot your point, do it again. There it is. And I'm gonna graph my line in blue. There it is, okay. Next, I'm gonna graph my, my inverse in red. I'm gonna write it over here. Let's see, where is it at? F inverse of X. And what was the inverse? It was X minus four over negative three, but I'm gonna simplify it so I can see my slope. 
So what is x divided by negative three? It's negative one third x. And what is negative four divided by negative three? Negative times a negative is a positive. Four divided by three is 1.3 or one and one third. Okay, so I got this from here. I just simplified it. Okay, so what is my y-intercept? Let's graph this one in red. My y-intercept is positive 1.3. 1.3 is about right there. And my slope is one down, three to the right. So I go one down, one, two, three. Let me do it again. One down, one, two, three. Let's do it again. One down, one, two, three. Let's graph that in red. There it is. All right. And in green, guys, let's uh, let's graph our y equals x. Y equals x going down the middle, right here, 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 right here. Now, what did we say? a function and its inverse did, it was a what? A reflection, is that correct? Is that what we said? Yes, Mr. Q. So we write y equals x right here, and we write uh, that it's doing what? Reflection. It's doing a reflection. Does it look like a reflection? Yes? Or wait, let me put it in some of your words, you guys that love geometry, you just finished geometry, right, last year? What is it doing? It's being symmetrical. Boom. See, I'm, you, I'm telling you, I'm in 2030 a fat minute ago. Okay. And uh, that's the home play, guys. What we did prior to this example, you're going to do about, uh, I think, only eight problems. But for this kind, I only left you two of them, two of these. Okay. So, once again, tutoring after lunch. Be there or be elsewhere. Bam. Have a good one, guys. I'll see you guys later. Peace. Bye.